Good morning, everyone. Today is departure day. So in last week's episode, our water maker blew up. There's a whole discussion as to why it blew up and where the fitting, why this fitting exploded. It was clearly glued back together by someone and put into a pressure vessel that essentially was always going to fail. That fitting exploding caused problems further on down the chain in the water maker. So we don't have a water maker. So anyway, Phil was working till like about half past eight, 9 p.m. last night. And this morning he messaged me at seven to say, I think I've, I know a shop that can get another part. Either way, we don't have time to leave. We're yeah. way past our departure time. Yeah. We have to get going. We have, a, we have a boat to catch. So irrespective of whatever happens, we are leaving this morning. We are leaving in about 90 minutes. I'm just getting the boat ready to sail, which essentially means making sure everything is stowed, making sure we have a grab bag prepared, our other bits and bobs. We know where water is. We know all these other bits and bobs are. So it's just about getting the boat ready to sail. Yeah, so as Nick said, we are on a bit of a um, deadline, which is never a comfortable feeling amongst sailors or possibly anyone. This boat, Ruby Rose 2, is being put on a ship in Phuket and we're currently in Pattaya and being shipped to the Med, which is very exciting and we are super, super pumped about that, but we need to get this boat to Phuket first and we're about 1600 miles away and we've got about two weeks to do that passage, which is okay, it's enough time, but there's certainly no room for any further delays. We plan to be leaving about a week ago and then a series of events put us back the water maker being one of them we also had to wait for um, our davits to be installed uh, that was running a little bit behind we had to wait for a part for our ice machine which broke we had to um, also less um, kind of urgently wait for uh, some guy here to make all of our fabric or our canvas work so we ordered like a big massive awning which is like a marquee and we ordered some side shades and and like a shade for the back of the boat as well. Just check the weather. Uh, we're gonna have to do a bit of a dog leg to get down to Malaysia because of the winds. The winds kind of, they come from the east um, across the Gulf of Thailand and then they kind of curve up. Uh, so they're coming from the south. So the further south we get, the further east the winds will be coming from, if that makes any sense at all. Point being, we need to get as far east as possible so that when we turn we have hopefully winds um, on the beam or at the very least we have a point of sail. Join us for this week's episode where we'll be sailing offshore down towards uh, Malaysia and yeah hopefully we have a really great sail. Fingers crossed. I don't want any more drama. I'm sick of drama. I just want to have the nice easy comfortable sail. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Well, fingers crossed. I don't want you jinxing shit, but yes, it's making water yeah. and the air seems to have purged out of the system or whatever. But yeah, so Phil's just checking the fittings, checking the fresh water supply. It is saying that we've got 100 parts per million of salt, which is half. 200 parts is fresh water, so 130. So we're way below. It's making water. And that's all because Phil's changed out that tiny little fitting. I don't know. I think it's a few things. I think actually the air purging from the system, leaving it. Try to check the little um, accumulator pressure there. Has anybody ever checked that? On the accumulator pump? Yes. Uh, it should be 60 psi. Is that for the water maker or the one that just cuts fresh water? No, no, it's a water maker one. Uh, no, no, I have, I have checked it. No, okay, I'll check that. All right, let's uh, try and get out of here. Yep. So I've got both lines on a slip. Mid lines off. Bow or stern off first? Do you do it. I think you did bow first last time and then stuff. Yeah, okay. Bow's off. Alright, we're off. I mean, look at all those day tripper boats. There's like loads of them coming out now. We're just sneaking right in front, I hope. And we're off. <laughs> Bloody last. Oh jeez, I'm so glad to be off that dock. Ocean Marina, John Tien, we absolutely, we've just loved our time here. Scott and Phil have been so amazing. They've made us feel very welcome and Phil has basically solved every single one of our problems, knock on wood. 
strange to be leaving, to be honest, but I feel very good about it because it is time we are on our way. We're off. We are off. Look, we've got three or four days at sea. We've only been underway for a few minutes. I'm already like covered in, covered in mud, but that's okay. Everything's stowed away now and it's time to get the sails out. was uh, quite smooth. <laughs> Good. That'd be a really nice feeling. Once again, we're just motoring down this little passage between the mainland and these islands here. And we've got this wonderful view of this fishing village just to port. And yeah, we've motored past or sailed past a few times and every time I look at it and I'm just fascinated. What we really want to do is make as much easting as possible because we're going to have some south winds uh, or south easterlies uh, tomorrow I think and so if we're heading southeast which is kind of our overall heading um, that's going to be pretty unpleasant. So we want to go east and then tack so that we're heading more south and so when we get those southeasterlies we are at least uh, enjoying a point of sail and not motoring directly into them or having to tack. We'll see. Last time we did this passage to Koh Samet and Koh Chang, uh, the forecast wasn't particularly accurate. Uh, we got something quite different, better. So I'm hoping that the same holds true for today. Yeah, next few days at sea, hoping it's gonna be really nice. If we take a course alteration to starboard, we should actually get a better angle. So where's it coming from? Well, the moment it's... it's uh... Hang on, I've got the f***ing myself. 58, yes, I have f***ing <laughs> in the middle. Basic left and right. Port and starboard. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? To write you this song. All right, my watch. Nick has set up the day bed and he's having a nice little short serve breath. We are motor sailing along at about six and a half, seven knots. Too long. You keep blowing me out. We're about 30 miles offshore. It is insane size of the fishing boats out here and I mean they are tiny they are in many cases smaller than our rib I guess what we do on passage a lot is plan for meals so this happens upon a very simple but very clever idea which actually I think you should all use if you are safe anywhere else for that matter we were eating in a local restaurant a little Thai restaurant it was bloody amazing and we just went and bought a load of meals take away and frozen so tonight we have um, a Penang curry and some rice. We're on passage, so we tend to not eat a great deal. What do you say? Hello. Yeah, well, you know, so far so good. It's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, so we've been underway for about, what, like five hours and six hours. six hours just settling into being on passage, to be honest. And yeah, like not super thrilled with the upwind conditions, but I, to be honest, as I keep saying to Nick, like every mile we do is a mile closer to Phuket, so I'm, I'm happy just to be underway. Yeah. All right, so there you go. That's, uh, that's life on board, six hours in. All righty, we are 
are just settling down for our evening. It's kind of all good, we're motor sailing along. Um, at the moment we've got, we're doing about uh, five and a half knots. So it's a little bit slower than we'd like, but um, at least it's comfortable. Shaping up to have a lovely sunset and I just heard the microwave go, so I think that's my dinner. Not quite ready. Do you know what, it's been a very pleasant day actually. Yeah. Watermaker got fixed, set off on time. And um, yeah, it's coming up uh, 6 o'clock, 10 past 6. The smell of uh, curry fills the air and fills me with a little... Yeah, I'm hungry actually. Yeah, no. I'm hungry. It's not if I'm hungry actually. I kind of think we just graze, we just move between grazing, don't we? But I'm hungry. And that was the ding of the microwave. <laughs> Things ready. I'm that person who needs frozen food to be like piping, piping hot, otherwise I get paranoid. Just about to start my first night watch. Just had a quick shower so my hair's all wet. And we've got plenty of fishing boats around as you can see in the background. Um, so yeah, I've got three hours on and then it'll be Nick's turn and that's how we'll go throughout the night. Looking forward to tonight, looking forward to getting our first night out the way. It's always a relief when you kind of get that first night done. Tomorrow morning, we'll be a little bit closer to Malaysia, which will be a really good feeling. It's four o'clock in the morning, just finished my night watch and uh, on my second night watch. I'm gonna try and get some sleep now. And yeah, we've made a course change, so it's a little bit less comfortable, <laughs> but at least we're making our way towards Malaysia. So it's not all bad. Morning. If you last saw me a couple of hours ago, I uh, fell asleep straight away, despite the bumpiness and uh, woke up an hour before I was due to take over from Nick and um, just he was like super tired and I just said you know I'm awake I'm up go to bed we're just using the day bed here um, so that we have access to each other and so that we are close to each other not thrilled with how the sailing is going so far I use the word sailing loosely because we are definitely motor sailing we tacked a couple of hours ago to try and make our way south and uh, yeah the wind just isn't it's meant to be coming around a little bit more to the east and it's not it's coming very much from the south kind of south southeast and uh, that means that we are just not on course we're kind of aiming for a heading of of about 185 and we're currently on 213. So I just keep on hoping that the wind's gonna shift around and that will allow us to just shift our heading around so that we've got a bit less west in our course. Um, I think and hope that's happening now. That's what the forecast said would happen around this time. So I'm very much hoping that that is what eventuates. Uh, because other than the fact that we aren't quite going in the right direction. It's actually a really nice morning. Apart from the engines being on, which you can hear, I'm sure. But yeah, sun's coming up and, you know, hopefully we'll have a nice day. But I think the next 24 hours is gonna be basically beating into it. And that does not fill me with much joy. One thing you never, ever, ever, ever want to find on your coach roof when you're doing a rig check in the morning is this. And if I can't put it back, I will try and bodge it because we need to get a main up. Hello. What are you doing here? For the first time since getting to Asia, I actually see dolphins. We have just arrived into Malaysia. So beautiful. I can see Indonesia. We're in Malaysia and we're right next door to Singapore. Crazy, right? We are doing something very exciting today and possibly quite stressful. So we're just entering the Singapore Strait now. 
Singapore Police, Singapore Police, this is your Ruby Rose 2, over. Eased off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it's just jammed. It has been quite the journey.